MATLAB series on dealing with polar and Cartesian coordinates. Let's do this entire problem here. We've just seen how to take these Cartesian values and make them polar. Let's talk about how to enter this polar value in MATLAB and how we can do the total calculation here to get to our result of 12 e to the negative j 83 degrees. All of those quantities and go ahead and put them into MATLAB. And so we had our fraction on the right, which we'll begin to call these different variables, where we had j4, and on the bottom we had 3 plus j4. Oop, and you can see there it gave me an error because I did not put in the multiplication. And so we will put in the multiplication and have 3 plus j4. Now, our polar coordinate was 15 e to the negative j, 120 degrees. And so to enter that quantity, what we're going to do is, is go ahead and we're going to call it the variable c just so we can store this 15 times and then exp is the function for the exponential so e to something and we would want to type j times the angle and here you may be tempted to type for the angle negative 120 degrees but this is not going to give you the correct answer because all of the angles, when they are represented in, inside of MATLAB, need to be done in terms of radians. And so this right here is a quantity in terms of degrees. And so we need to use our functions degrees to radians to properly convert this value. And so when we hit enter here, we can see that MATLAB is internally automatically converting that polar expression into our Cartesian expression. Now we can calculate our result by saying we will take c times, and then it was j to the 4, divided by 3 plus j4, and the answer we get is, again, this Cartesian expression. And when we were doing the math by hand, we, we had this, we converted all into a polar coordinate system because the math was easier. But let's go ahead and double check this to make sure that we've got the actual right answer. And just for the sake of easily typing things, let's store this result as x. And so we know from the previous videos that if we have a Cartesian point and we want to check what it would be in a polar system, we want to know the absolute value of x, and we hopefully here are going to get out the value 12. And we do, and we get out 12 exactly for our point. And again, we want to know now the angle of this point, and so we want to use the angle of x, but again, we want to make sure that because that answer is going to be given to us in radians, we convert from radians to degrees for our answer. And we're hoping here to come out with negative 83. And the value we do come out with is, in fact, negative 83. So you, you can see from this process how all of our phasor math can be really complicated by hand. But if I enter everything inside of MATLAB, I can just type the expression in MATLAB, and it'll do it all for me. I do have to do the manual conversions between polar and between Cartesian, but if you just store everything as the proper variable, MATLAB will handle all of the representations and the math internally, and then when you get down to your final answer, you can convert it back to a more human readable format, which is probably going to be the polar format. Learning how to do this in MATLAB is going to save you a lot of time and effort in doing your phasor analysis, and especially when we come to filters and AC circuits.